Okay, so I'm going to talk you through some school leader trends and talk a little bit about the characteristics of an outstanding school, I think. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, I come from an organisation called The Key. Um, we answer school leaders' questions and the reason why I can talk to you about data and trends is because we have about 20,000 school leaders who are using our service, asking us questions and looking at the answers that others have asked. And the graph you can see here um, just shows the um, number of clicks on articles and questions asked and the way that that is increasing over time pretty rapidly. So I thought I'd start with a bit of neurology because uh, school leaders really love neurology. I thought we'd start with uh, Homer Simpson and how he portions up his brain and the things that are important to him. Moving swiftly on to neurology of school leaders, we can see um, through the activity on our website what portion of your brains are being used on different things. And interestingly, staff seems to be taking up a lot more of your time than, for example, pupils and parents. I can, I'm full of cold, everybody go, ah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I will do my best to shout. Um, so if we're looking at outstanding schools, I'm going to look at these four areas really quickly because I did promise seven and a half minutes. Um, what we've done is we've looked at the activity on our website and looked at it according to what the category, offset category of the schools that the school leaders are in. Um, and you can see that outstanding schools tend to have a more stable leadership team. They're asking us fewer questions about transitions and succession in their schools. They seem to have a better understanding of the governing body. Um, they want to know more about structure and role of the governing body and to get that right. Are they more likely to prepare to, for inspection? I thought this was really interesting to see that outstanding schools and satisfactory schools seem to have the same level of nervousness around their inspections. Um, and unsatisfactory schools seem to have kind of given up a little bit, but maybe not. Um, similarly, the commitment to school evaluation seems like everybody's pretty much committed to it. More likely to have reviewed the curriculum, I thought this was really interesting. It, for me, it asked the question of whether the outstanding and the satisfactory schools um, were thinking about academy status and about the new freedoms and being able to rejig curriculum. Don't know. All I'm doing here with this data is posing questions more than giving answers to anything. More inclined to su support gifted and talented. Looks like, again, that's pretty important across the board and perhaps unsatisfactory schools just have a lot more on their plate now to pull themselves up. But I thought what was really interesting was well-being. So I thought we'd just step away from the Ofsted categories for a minute and just look at across the country. Um, this slide shows 2011 and 2012. The light blue is the interest in well-being in 2011, and the dark blue is 2012. So in, apart from Yorkshire and the Humber, which seem to have slightly increased their interest in children's well-being, there seems to be a massive drop-off across the country. But if we go back now to outstanding schools, look at their interest in pastoral care. It's quite a sharp difference to other categories of schools. And again, their awareness of child protection issues. And their likelihood to request information about pupils' physical and psychological well-being. Much, much higher. So I thought, you know, when you ask different people what makes children happy, if you ask my children, it's sitting in front of the telly and stuffing themselves with crisps. If you ask Michael Gove, and you can't give a presentation to do with education without mentioning Michael Gove, he will say passing exams will make you happy. And I thought we'd go back to the Simpson family, who obviously really know what there is to know. So ignorance is bliss. As your intelligence goes up, your happiness goes down. And Lisa's made us a graph. Thanks very much.
very much. And she had two minutes to spare, which is very impressive.